He is risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Blessed Resurrection Day from Grace in the Desert. Oh, isn't it nice to be out of those grave clothes and in out of that morning and into the joy of Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah, the bright colors. The sun is up. We probably should have started an hour ago if we wanted to have this be a true sunrise service, but I think there would have been rebellion in the ranks if I would have brought that up. So we're just going to stick with the 6.30 time. Uh, we will be celebrating Easter today, and, um, and for the next few weeks. But what we are going to be doing uh, following, uh, following this Sunday is we will be starting a message series on the book of Jude, which um, a very short book, 25 verses, but uh, really, really kind of solidifies for us who Jesus is uh, and who we should listen to when it comes to who Jesus is. So I think it's a perfect follow-up to, uh, to Easter and Lent. So... Uh, if you're going to commune with us this morning, please make sure you have your uh, bread, wafer, cracker, and wine or grape juice ready and uh, so that you can join us at the appropriate time. Um, we may have some furry friends joining me up here, here and there. Um, you know we worship in our homes, so, uh, so just uh, either ignore them or enjoy them, I guess. They're, those are your two options. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And um, I, I think that's it. Um, we have a theme verse for this morning. And then we have a responsive invocation. Our reading, our theme verse for this morning is from 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And now please join me in our invocation and call to worship. And we begin as we always do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He has risen, he risen indeed. Risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus has come that we may have life and have it to the fullest. Christ has died. Christ has died. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ is risen. For Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Christ will come Christ. again. God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. Christ will Christ come again. Christ is risen. He has risen he is indeed. Risen. Hallelujah. And now Debbie, I believe, has a children's message for us. Good morning, my children of Christ. I welcome you on this Easter Sunday morning. Now, there was a couple of women that were going to the grave to um, put herbs and spices on Jesus. And as they approached, it, the wonder was, who rolled the stone away? And... When they got to the tomb, they definitely found out the stone had been rolled away. And where was Jesus? That's right. An angel told the women at the tomb, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Jesus was alive. Easter reminds us that no matter what stands in our way, Jesus can roll it away. So many things like fear, doubt, sin, anger, hatred, physical problems, sadness, can be like those big stones that block us from seeing 
and celebrating with our risen Christ. The good news of Easter is that Jesus rolls away every one of the heavy burdens in our lives away so we can be with him and he can be with us. Now that he is risen from the grave, nothing will separate us from him anymore, not even death. When our time on earth comes to an end, we will be given new life in heaven with him. So the good news is that the stone is rolled away and there is new life to come. We do as the women did when they saw Jesus resurrected. The Bible says they bowed down at his feet and worshiped him. We worship him today in word and song and celebration here in the church. And we worship him by going out and telling others about his rising from the dead, just as the women did when they went to the disciples and said, we have seen the Lord. Christ is risen. He has he risen, risen indeed. In and now, for our song for Jesus, I will sing the first verse, and you come in on the refrain. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes! yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. yes. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And now our first reading is from the Old Testament. It is Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 through 21. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew, your, you blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples have heard. They tremble. Pangs have seized the inhabitants of Felicia. Now are the chiefs of Eden destroyed dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as stone. Till your people, O Lord, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. 
the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 6 and 12 through 26. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain we are even found to be misrepresenting god because we testified about god that he raised christ whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised for if the dead are not raised not even christ has been raised and if christ has not been raised your faith is futile and you are still in your sins that those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all, of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. 
he saw the linen cloth lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head, one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to her, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. He turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And at that, he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to, to you, O Christ.
Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Abba, Father God, we thank you for bringing us together this morning on this glorious Resurrection Sunday. And we just thank you so much for the gift of Jesus, for the gift of his death and the gift of his resurrection. And help us this morning as we just dig a little deeper into that, what that means for us, not only today, but when, you come, when Jesus comes back again. Oh, man, I ask that you would wash over every place where this message is being heard with your spirit, that you would fill my heart with that same spirit. Oh, and that you would fill my mouth with the words that you once spoken so that what is spoken and heard here this morning is your truth and yours alone. And we ask this all in that most holy and precious name of your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Christ is risen! He has risen indeed! Alleluia! Wow! Those words this morning are ringing out all over the world. Every place where people are worshiping the risen Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We know he rose. Paul reinforced that for us in our, in our New Testament reading for this morning. There were over 500 witnesses all at one time who saw Jesus. He appeared to the twelve first. He appeared to Peter. Oh, but before that, before that, he appeared to Mary Magdalene. Mary, Mary, a woman in a society where women's testimony was not taken as anything important. Jesus chose to reveal himself as resurrected to Mary Magdalene. Oh, a devout disciple of his, one who had followed him, one who was at the foot of the cross, as he said, it is finished, my work is done here. Who mourned him, who came to the grave on that first Easter Sunday to mourn and grieve and got the surprise of her life. A surprise that would carry into eternal life. For Jesus was not dead. He had risen. He had risen from the dead. Just like he said he would. Just like the prophecies in the Old Testament said he would. Our reading from the Old Testament this morning said, You have become my salvation. Oh, and amen to that. Christ is our salvation. There is a song that I really like. Now, those of you who know me are probably laughing right now because I like a lot of songs, but this song really speaks to what we are talking about this morning. It's by Mercy Me. It's called Best News Ever. And it talks about all these things we can do in our lives aside from Christ, right? That we think we can accomplish apart from Christ. But... And here's the refrain, what if I were to tell you that the fight's already been won? I think your day's about to get better. What if I were to tell you that the work's already been done? Oh, it's not good news. It's the best news ever! Because that's what the cross accomplished, right? The cross accomplished what we could not. The cross accomplished atonement for our sins. The cross accomplished the, the, the ability for us to be able to stand with Christ as forgiven. Well, Christ didn't need to be forgiven, right? But we did. We do. Christ took care of all of that for us on that Good Friday when our hearts were heavy as we heard his last words from the cross. Now, 
2,000 years later, plus some a few years, we know the, the, we knew on Good Friday when we left worship, even though we were sorrowful and feeling in darkness, we knew the end of the story. We knew the best news ever. But Mary didn't. Peter and John, as they went to the tomb, didn't. They forgot. They forgot what Jesus said. And so they were sorrowful. They knew Jesus had died. They knew he had been laid in the tomb. So the best news ever was announced to Mary. As Jesus revealed himself in the garden, as she recognized him, as he called her name, best news ever. But the best news ever doesn't stop there. You see, because Jesus resurrected from the dead on that first Easter Sunday morning and lives into eternity, seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty as we proclaim in the creeds, that means that when he comes again, well, we aren't going to be able to mistake it, right? Mary didn't see him as Jesus until he opened the eyes of her heart by saying her name. When Jesus comes again, and I know that's scary for some people, but when Jesus comes again, we are not going to mistake that it is him. He is going to come with trumpet sound. He is going to descend in all of his glory from heaven. And he is going to resurrect every body. You see, we live thinking about the resurrection in the past tense. But just as in Advent, when we anticipate him coming again, so now today too, we look at that second resurrection, that resurrection of the dead that we also proclaim in our creeds, but we don't think about it very much. You see, everyone who has fallen asleep in Jesus, everyone who has died an earthly death in Jesus, will be raised. Bodies perfect, glorified bodies. Yeah, that's the beauty of the promise of the resurrection. Not that it was a one-time event in history that, oh, well, totally changed the course of history, but that it is an ongoing hope and joy for us that when we die and are buried, no matter what shape our body is in, on that second coming of Jesus, we will be resurrected, whole and perfect. We need to live into that hope. We need to do what Mary did so that everyone can live into that hope. Go and tell, Jesus told Mary, go and tell my disciples. Now, they didn't believe her. <laughs> But they weren't always ready to accept what Jesus had told them, right? We've got the benefit of hindsight. We've got the benefit of 500 witnesses. We've got the benefit of all of the disciples, the apostles. We have got the benefit of Mary Magdalene's testimony. And we need to proclaim it. Shout it from the rooftops. Let people know, this is my God and my salvation, this Jesus Christ, who they tried to kill, and he died, but then he rose again, and he rose again quietly. This first resurrection was a quiet event, not one that was made known widely in that moment. Oh, <laughs> I am so looking forward to when Jesus comes again. 
when we will hear the trumpet sound, when we'll see him descend from heaven in all his glory, inviting us, calling us, raising us with him to the new creation, the new creation, the new heaven, and the new earth that we are promised because of Easter Sunday. Go and tell everyone you see. I have seen the Lord. He is alive. He is living. He brings joy and hope. If only you will let him in. Amen. Amen. And now, oh, because it's Easter, we are going back to proclaiming our faith in the words of we believe.
Please join me in prayer. Each petition ends with, O oh Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life, your response is, let us live as your new creations. O oh, risen Christ, we laud and worship you for rising from the grave, the first fruits of those who have died. Help us to make you first in our life of faith and trust in you as our leader and forerunner. Let us never put ourselves before you, but give of ourselves first to you and then to one another. O Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life, let us live as your new creations. Like the women who came to your tomb, we are often filled with fear and worry about the future. Roll away all that keeps us from drawing near to you and trusting in you fully. Fill us with confidence and peace in knowing that you will never leave us or forsake us. O Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life, let us live as your new creation. As Easter people, compel us to spread joy and share the saving news of your death and resurrection with all whom we meet. Let us be your ambassadors of hope to the hurting, bringing release to the captive and healing to the downcast. May we truly live as your new creations bringing honor and glory only to you, O Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life. Let us live as your new creations. Bring to new life the unity of spirit in our faith communities. Bind us as one in our efforts to live as your forgiven and redeemed people who reach out in love to our neighbors. Rid us of any divisions and help us to support one another in our common goal of making you known to all. O Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life. Let us live as your new creations. Revive in us a sense of purpose in our spiritual walk with you. May our prayer life be enlivened. May our reading of scripture be more and more enlightening. May our worship of you be truly invigorating. Let our interactions with our brothers and sisters in the faith reflect a greater rootedness in you. O Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life, let us live as a new creation. Keep our focus on the new life that is yet to come, your paradise to come. You are the first fruits of the resurrection to come. Never let us be so distracted by the experiences of this earth that we fail to remember we are awaiting a new heaven and earth where there will be no more sin, no more tears, no more pain, and where you will be seated on the throne of heaven forevermore. O oh Christ, who rose from the grave to give us new life. Let us live as your new creation. As we await the day of your return, be with those who struggle here on earth with sickness and injury, grief and pain. Be with all who are sick or hurting or need our prayers. Instill in them a reliance on your grace and mercy and a dependence on your good and gracious will for them. O Christ, who rose from the grave, to give us new life. Let us live as your new creation. All these petitions we offer in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who did the will of God and lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Well, we are all sinners, so join me now in confession. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship. 
the redemption of our bodies. We groan today because we have sinned and done what is evil in the sight of the Lord. We confess that we have come to temptations of the devil, the word and in your flesh, and we seek to be restored in your relationship with Christ. We reflect on the sins that have cut us off from Christ and deserve punishment from God, and we silently reflect on those as they're different for each of us. receive this good news. Actually, best news ever, right? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerful, powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And so in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. On Thursday night, we commemorated this meal as when Jesus had uh, instituted it, given it to us. And we were a little sorrowful then because we knew what was coming. We knew that he was going to be handed over to die, that he would die, and that he would be in the tomb for three days. But this morning, this, this meal takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? It, it brings us to mind not only the suffering death of G and death of Jesus, but his resurrection, his victory over death, his victory over sin. And so we receive this meal in a whole new light, always remembering why it was necessary and knowing that it brings for us forgiveness of sin and growth in our faith. And so on that night, when he was handed over to die for the sins of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had blessed it and broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And then he took the cup, the Passover cup of redemption, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my blood, the blood of a new covenant given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. These, well, these are the gifts of God for all of us, God's people. And now, let's pray that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. And now please commune as we commune here. The body of Christ is given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Siri, the body of Christ is given to you this beautiful morning. Amen. And the blood of Christ is shed for you today. Amen. And now may this body that was given for all of us and this blood that was shed for all of us keep us all in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in that peace that only comes from the giver of this meal. Amen. And now please join me in our offering prayer. Lord, let, let our, our congregation be a witness to you, you immersed in scripture, constant in prayer, joyful in worship, generous in giving, a loving, supportive community, reaching out to those in need. Accept these gifts we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, after they had witnessed the resurrection, the women were told to go and tell, to share what Jesus had done. You and I have been given the same privilege. Go and tell. And go and tell with the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you for worshiping with us on this beautiful, wonderful resurrection day. Next week, as I said, we will start a message series on the book of Jude. So we hope that you will join us for that. And no Bible study this week. Uh, we're recovering from Easter. So um, we end Holy Week. So uh, there will not be a Bible study. So uh, we bless, we pray blessings for your day and for your week. And remember always, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. <laughs> Hallelujah! And Christ will come again. That's why we live into this hope. God bless. We love you all.